Alright, so this is one of those rare instances, I guess, where I have to give a spoiler warning for an anime episode. So, spoilers for episode 975 of One Piece. And in case you haven't watched the episode, but you read the manga, like let's say you're all caught up to the manga, you might be thinking right now, Oh, Techie, you don't have to worry about spoiling me. I know everything. I'm caught up to the manga with chapter 1013 or whatever. You can't spoil me for something that happens in the anime. Oh no! No, because every once in a while you get something like this where something kind of important is shown in the anime that wasn't shown in the manga and it kind of has ramifications on the entire story and I feel like Oda definitely had a hand in this. So I reiterate, spoilers for episode 975 of the One Piece anime. Okay, we good? All right, so that explains what happens to Toki. I mean, it was ambiguous in the manga, but, you know, it's One Piece. You know how it goes. You know, a character is off-screen killed, we just assume that they might have survived, you know, because Oda doesn't really like to kill a lot of characters in a lot of regards, and, um, the thing with Toki in the manga, and I went back and reread it, was, uh, she was there in Bakura Town, you know, announcing the prophecy of the Scabbards, like, you are the light of the world that shall hearken in a new era of Wano! The shadows will be cast upon the endless night and she's doing her little monologue there her final uh, performance before the curtain draws so to speak and in the crowd you just see a member of the beast pirates like you know like with a pistol and you just hear a gunshot and that's it you just hear it and the panel like we just see like the moon or something we don't actually see toki get shot we don't know if she's dead we don't know if she time jumps we don't know like maybe she could have gotten shot but then she escaped bakura town and then time jumped we don't know but in episode 975 no it is very, very direct with how Toki, you know, how her last moments go, okay? She's giving the speech. Uh, actually, there's another member of the Beast Pirates that fires an arrow at her, and while she's giving the speech, she is, like, pumped full of arrows, but she just keeps talking. So she's like, you are the light of the new... <laughs> the new era you know and so she's doing that stuff and then finally you see the guy with the pistol and then you don't actually see her getting shot because it's pretty brutal but she's like talking and then you hear the gunshot and she's like Ugh! and then she's like coughing up blood in her eyes like the light of her eyes kind of goes out and then she collapses and then blood begins to pool around her and the last shot is the blood pooling and you see the reflection of the moon in her blood and so that's an interesting a parallel to the Kozuki clan and the Amasuki clan every daimyo clan of Wano has the uh, kanji or the word for moon in it in some way except for the Kurozumi clan which means black coal so the moon is a very relevant thing here I mean the moon if there's any other explanation for it, I mean, the moon is a relevant thing in One Piece altogether, okay? So the fact it keeps coming back to the moon, hold that tight. It's going to be important later on, okay? Eneru is going to come back down and rule everything, but that's not for a few more story arcs. Anyway, so yeah, um, from the, the episode right there, it seems pretty abundantly clear Toki died that night 20 years ago, which... We could have assumed, because she did say, you know, I'm going to stay here. This is the place where I built a home with Odin. I have my, ch I had my children here in Curry. Um, I love the people of Curry. You know, this is the place where I'm going to die. She could have escaped. She easily could have escaped. Um, even after sending the other scabbards into the future, she still probably had enough time to go down to the town and do her little announcement, and then she maybe could have jumped into the future, but she chose not to. She chose to, like, no... I'm done running, I'm done, you know, using my powers to escape into the future. I'm going to stay right here and make my final stand. And my last act will be announcing the mighty prophecy, okay? So, um, I definitely feel Oda had a hand in this. The same way that I feel like a couple episodes ago when we got to see, like, King's outfit 20 years ago, like the way King dressed with the crosses and, like, the dark brown, like, maroon, you know, leather suit he was wearing and everything. Um, you know, I feel like Oda, yeah, he doesn't have a lot of stuff to do with the anime because he's a really busy dude. Like, if you see interviews with Oda, he talks about how he only sleeps, like, five or six hours a day. He has a team of people that help him with the backgrounds and stuff. But working as a mangaka, that's a lot of of work okay so he doesn't have enough time to like sit down and like also write episodes out and everything um but i feel like every now and then maybe he'll like okay uh here are the designs i have for king 20 years ago and he hands that to the anime department and they're the ones like okay we'll draw that in the anime or i feel like there are other instances where maybe oda when he's drawing the manga he feels like maybe i should have made something a little bit more clear or maybe i wanted to, de to depict it a little differently or maybe i forgot something and it's 
included in either an SBS or a data book like the Vivera cards, or in this instance, in the anime. Because not only did we see a scene with Toki dying, like straight up falling down and dying, but we also got to see one additional scene with her and Odin, which also answers another question. Also, if you look over my left shoulder, right? Left shoulder, uh, you'll see my clock is over here, and that's on purpose. I usually take my clock down because I edit, and, you know, if I'm, like, messing up a scene, I have to go back and redo it so the clock will jump around, but considering this is Toki's video and it involves time powers, I felt like it would be kind of, um, interesting to show how long it takes me to do a video. We're, like, five minutes into this. Uh, I started filming at, like, ten after nine, which is actually early than I usually do this, but, yeah, so this gives you an idea of how long this process usually takes. Um, so if it jumps around, I'm just phasing in and out of time space. Okay, Okay, cool. So, um, there was a scene with Odin and Toki, right? And it addresses the question of, okay, why doesn't Toki just use her time powers to jump 20 years in the future, right? Because Odin was going on and on, and, and also in his letter, the last letter he gave Toki while he was in prison, the letter was basically like, you know, in 20 years, um, there's going to be a great war. A war greater than any other battle that's ever occurred, um, you know, like since the Void Century, and there's going to be great warriors that are going to arrive during that battle. Now, of course, Odin does not know exactly who these warriors are, uh, but he knows that, like, some new generation will arrive and fight on the side of the Kozukis, or the, fight, the side of good, and then there'll be like enemies like Kaido that'll be on the opposite end. So this ties back into the prophecy we heard about when, you know, Luffy and Kid and Law and Zoro and everybody were fighting against um, Kaido and like the narrator comes on and it's kind of like an Odin's voice and just like, you know, in 20 years the new generation will rise up. And that of course is uh, the new generation which is the worst generation, okay? So that's, that's the situation we have there with that. Um, but also, you had Roger that found Laugh Tale, and he's like, Well, mateys, I guess we arrived here just a tad too early, it seems. And the question is like, okay, yes, but if only you had the ability to travel into the future, if only you knew somebody that literally had the devil fruit that had the power to skip into the future whenever you so desired, okay? So yes, at the time when they arrived at Laugh Tale, Toki was not on the crew. Uh, Toki was left back at Wano at that point, but it still raises a little bit of a question, like how come Roger didn't just immediately think of Toki and then like, ah, we are a little bit late to, I mean, early to Laugh Tale, are we? All right then, men, set sail! for Wano Kuni. We shall find Toki and use her powers to just, you know, use the cheat code. You know, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. Boom, skip 20 years into the future. And then we'll go back to Laugh Tale and now we'll be on time. Um, you know, there's some issues with that. Like, okay, yeah, Roger's illness was very chronic at that point. Um, although I will say they discovered Laugh Tale 25 years ago and it was 24 years ago that Roger was executed. So that's like a whole year that Roger had after finding Laugh Tale that he had where he was still alive. He was getting progressively sicker, but he was still alive. So who knows? Maybe they would have had enough time to go from Laugh Tale all the way back to Wano, pick up Toki, go into the future, and then sail all the way back to Laugh Tale again. Who knows? Like, let's say just for argument, Toki was on the crew when they arrived at Laugh Tale. Like, they never dropped her off at Wano, okay? And so they see what the One Piece is. Like, ah, it looks like we're about 20 years too early, mateys. And then Toki actually maybe even threw out the idea. Like, Roger, I can use my power to send you all, like, 20, 25 years into the future right here. I feel like Roger still would have said no. I, st I feel like Roger would have been like, I it be okay, Toki. We were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. What are you going to do, right? It's it's probably best not to mess with a space-time continuum more than necessary. And also, I think Roger was kind of like, you know, interested in the idea of like him having a child and then his child growing up and then finding the One Piece. Like he kind of he kind of wanted to pass the torch at that point. Like at that point, Roger had been sick for several years. He knew he was going to die. And uh, he also had been adventuring for decades at this point. You know, he traveled to the end of the Grand Line. They found Lodestar and the Road Poneglyphs. He met so many people along his journey. I think Roger kind of just acknowledged the fact that after they found the last island, that was going to be their final journey. That was going to be the, uh, the swan song for his epic adventure. And... Um, even if there was a possibility, like a slim chance that they could use Toki's power to get sent into the future, he was just like, you know what, it's it's fine. I'd rather go out on this note, um, because that also seems as like, I will be the embers that burn for a new generation, matey! I be Goldie Roger! You know, and so I feel like that's how it would have went. 
But in the anime, we get that extra ep that ep extra scene there where Odin is talking to Toki, and they're, they're kind of speaking about Toki's original mission. Now, we still don't know what her original mission was, but Odin brings it up. Odin obviously knows. He just doesn't, you know, openly say it, so we don't find out. But he says, like, you know, after everything that's going on, Toki, and your original goal, uh, keeping that in mind, why don't you just travel 20 years into the future? And Toki, like, smacks Odin on, on the top of the head and just like, hey, that's mean, um, you know, implying that I would just leave you, implying that I would just jump into the future. Um, and she mentions to Odin, my uh, my goal or my, uh, you know, my dream, I guess. See, that's that's a mess up. I have to redo that. My goal or my mission, that was the word I was looking for, my mission has ultimately changed now since I've met you, Odin. Um, and it's like, yes, my original goal was to travel to a certain point in the future and reach Wano, uh, but now that I'm with you, I feel like my dream has been kind of, like, uh, accomplished, okay? So you could look at that one of two ways. You could look at that like Toki simply fell in love with Odin, so she's like, you know what, whatever my original mission was, I just want to be with you. Or you could look at it like her mission was to become the wife of Odin, was to arrive at Wano at that specific point, um, and also to have, you know, Momonosuke and Hiyori because they're going to be relevant later on with the new generation and everything like that. And, you know, the new rulers of Wano, for example. Uh, so you could look at it like that, too. But Toki definitely implied, like, yeah, I could jump 20 years into the future, um, and I could even take Odin, but it's just like, I don't, I feel like this. I feel like this is where I need to be right now. Like, this is my point. This is, like, the reason I began my journey, okay? Um, all those centuries ago to arrive at this one point here, okay? So, yeah, I feel like... <sighs> I think that conversation occurs a little bit in the manga. It doesn't occur at this exact point, because in the episode, it occurred whenever Toki burst out of the castle on the horse, and then as she's riding down to the to the Bakura town, down the mountain, she's thinking about that moment with Odin. I seem to recall something like that happened in the manga, but it might have been at a different point. Um, also, by the way, just a caveat, but I found it so damn funny in the episode. Um, so, when Toki is escaping the castle, right, she gets on the horse, and then she starts you know going down the mountain well in the anime it's hilarious where there's like these giant wooden doors that are like outside of the castle and a bunch of the beast pirates are guarding it like to make sure nobody gets out of the castle alive so they have all these beast pirates all these like waiters and pleasures or whatever they got guns like pointed at the door like no one's gonna get through here and then all of a sudden the door just boom just explodes and toki just rockets out of the freaking hallway on this horse like 30 feet in the air, like, giddy up, we're doing this! And they just hit the ground and then just start making for Bakura Town. I thought that was so funny. Like, did you attach freaking, like, like rocket thrusters to that horse, Toki? Like, how did you just burst out of all, like, all the beast pirates are like, whoa! <laughs> It's like that horse ate the damn rocket rocket fruit or something like that. I don't know, man. I want to know what's up with that horse. That horse is still wandering the wilds of Wano somewhere. That horse will be the thing that saves Luffy. It truly will be. The horse will arrive, Luffy will land, and they'll they'll, they'll gallop back up. It's like a it's like a mighty horse that can walk upon rainbows, you know, like that's how it's going to go, all right? Well, anyway, um so yeah, we don't get that scene in the manga, but I do think we get it somewhere else where that kind of that conversation goes. But it's definitely expanded upon. We also get the adorable scene where Toki does the cheek puffing thing, like where she's like, you know, scolding Odin. And so she's just like, you know, and so that's where Hiori got it. So that that kind of, you know, that all sinks back up there. That's interesting. Uh, we got to see Kawamatsu take Hiori uh, in his care. We got to see the other scabbards leave. We got to see Ashura and Denjiro fight against the Beast Pirates, you know, to give the others time enough to escape. And we saw Neko and Inu begin their argument, their age-old argument with each other as one of the numbers shows up and grabs them. And, you know, they're, they're um, you know, uh, pushed down so they can't continue onward to Curry Castle either. So, yeah. Yeah, really good solid episode um but yeah the ending was way more like uh palpable than it was in the manga where it's just like no toki is toki is most likely dead now this also leads into like a manga spoiler for later on so i guess spoilers for that as well um the person that healed the scabbards after their fight with kaido right um that was not Kondro. at least i mean i guess it could be Kondro, but it would be weird Kondro used his painting abilities to create a fake odin but 
there was somebody else that did not look like Odin that did not have Odin's silhouette that actually healed the scabbards up. So I guess you could assume that uh, Kanjiro created a fake Toki to heal them, because uh, it really did look like Toki's silhouette. And then after they were like up and walking around, then he makes a fake Odin, you know, just to add, add to the mystery, add to like the, oh yes, it was Toki and Odin that were still alive and they healed you. Now let's go scabbards and defeat Kaido once and for all. And then that's when he tricks them and attacks them with his paintings. I guess it's conceivable, um, but it's also more conceivable that it was Toki or Hiori. And if you go by this last episode where Toki is most assuredly dead, well, in that situation, I'm going to have to go with it being Hiori. Hiori somehow made it to Onigashima. You can throw out any number of ways that she was able to do that. Maybe she stowed away on Denjiro's, like one of Denjiro's ships or whatever. Who knows? Uh, but maybe Hiori was the one that arrived and like patched up the scabbards. Because it would be a little weird with after everything we just did with, you know, the, the Komurasaki, the courtesan and everything like that. We're just like, oh yeah, well, Hiori's going to be on mainland Wano and she's not really going to do anything for Onigashima. Although, Onigashima is heading toward the mainland so i guess that's how you could get her involved also might how you get um, tengu yama hitetsu involved in some way uh because onigashima is making the move to the to the capital um something else though and i have to reference this um when and we're actually going to see this in the next episode when this is going to be covered uh, i saw that in the previews the scene with orochi in the bath so Orochi is like terrified of the scabbards, terrified of the prophecy Toki spoke about. Um, and you know, can you really blame Orochi because he just witnessed Odin, you know, survive an hour in a boiling pot of oil, you know? So after that point, he's like scared. He's just like paranoid at this point. Like, oh no, he's, they're not even human. They're like some kind of spirits or vengeful zombie samurai. They're going to come back and get me. I am Lord Orochi. I am terrified. Draw my bath at once. Make sure it's scalding hot, you know? So anyway, he gets in the bath and he's like why can't they find their bodies i want a single bone i want their bodies right in front of me right now at this instant and we're like we're looking lord orochi we can't find them and he's like Ugh. so here's my question obviously he couldn't find the scabbards bodies because the scabbards made the time jump into the future um you know ashura went off denjiro went off to the to the you know little uh you know shrine in the forest and uh kawamatsu went to go protect hiori um but what about odin and what about toki see that's the thing we don't know when orochi was saying you know why can't we find any of their bodies was he referring to every single one? Was he referring to Odin, Toki, and the Scabbards? Or was he only referring to the Scabbards? Because, I'll be honest with you, like, you, I mean, maybe you could argue that, like, Orochi's paranoia is maybe a little bit too exaggerated, right? Um, like, if you don't get time travel involved, if you just assume time travel really doesn't exist, and that's basically what Kaido said. And Kaido's from the outside world. Kaido's the guy that literally has a mythical dragon fruit, and he never even really bought into the time thing. He's just like, yeah, I know I could turn into a dragon, and I have a guy on my crew that could turn into a damn pteranodon and a mammoth, but a time travel fruit, glug, glug, glug. <laughs> that's crazy, Orochi. You're worrying over nothing, right? I understand. Time travel, accepting that that's a real thing, that's a bit of a stretch. Especially in Wano, where not that many people know about, like, the, the bigger world and all the different devil fruit abilities and everything like that. Granted, okay? Um, but, I'll tell you one thing. If Orochi was right in front of this boiling pot of oil, and Odin got shot, and you saw him get shot in the brain, in the noggin, and he fell into the oil, dead, and then you go to check the oil, and you're just like, you know, you, you, somebody sticks like a metal pole in the oil, like they cool it down a bit, like, okay, pull Odin's body out, like, um, uh, I can't find it in here somewhere, Lord Orochi. And it's just like, what do you mean you can't find it? Dump it out! And so they just dump out the giant vat of oil, which is not environmentally friendly in the slightest. And there's just no body. There's no body, which is Odin's body, but there's no body. Okay, at that moment, I think that's where Orochi would be like, oh no, he's turned into a ghost, you know? He's like, well, maybe he just dissolved in the oil. He survived for an hour in the oil. You think he dissolved in the oil, you idiot? <laughs> you know? So... Um, that would be terrifying. That would be scary. That would be like an old school ghost story or whatever. You're like, there was a hook on the car door this whole time. Or they opened the grave and they found nothing. Woo! You know, like they dipped the vat of oil over and there was no 
Odin to be found. Like, that would be it. And then they also can't find the Scabbard's bodies. And what if they can't find Toki's body either? I just bring this up for the fact that, like, we saw those graves at Curry Castle earlier on in the arc. And Kinemon mentioned that they were, you know, they were empty. They were just empty graves. They were just grave markers there uh, for the Scabbards and for Odin and for Toki and Momonosuke and Hiori and everybody. Um, but apparently, from what we understand, Orochi did have Odin's body and Toki's body that didn't disappear, from what we understand. They might have, but we just don't. Um, I guess there also could have been a thing where maybe one of the retainers of the Kozuki clan might have showed up at the last minute to, like, grab Toki's body and escape. Um, because here's the thing, Toki also has the power of the Time Time Fruit, which if she's dead, that means it's gonna reincarnate, which is kind of a big deal. And maybe it's not gonna get brought up, but I feel like it has to get brought up because... It's the time fruit, for God's sake. This is a very important fruit, okay? If Toki had the damn jacket fruit, I wouldn't really care. Oh no! The jacket fruit has been reincarnated somewhere in Wano! It's just awaiting someone to pluck it from the tree and receive the ultimate paramecia power! Of the jacket fruit! No, but it's a time-traveling fruit kind of relevant. Um... Here's another theory, too. Here's another thing. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, Toki could have also been very near death. Like, she could have been a point where she did get shot, and she's on the ground, and she's bleeding out. That might have been another thing, too. Maybe Oda was like, okay, in the anime, I want to sh show her getting shot, so I make it very, very abundantly clear that she's dead, so people will assume that she's 100% dead, but she actually had one final act of life before she died. And so as she's on the ground, bleeding out, about to lose consciousness, her last act of life was jumping into the future, and so her body just poof, disappeared right there and then she appeared like right after the battle is over in onigashima okay so she arrives like right after they defeat kaido they slay kaido and big mom and that you know orochi is truly dead once and for all and wano is freed and, like we did it and then all of a sudden like momo's there like looking up to the sky like mom dad i did it we did it together wano is back in our hands again I just hope that, I just wish that you were here to see us do it. And then Toki, blood, covered in blood, covered in blood and arrows, just pops up in front of Momo like, Hi, son. Ah! And, like, and like, just drops to the ground like, I used time powers to jump into the future. You're looking well. Oh, hi, Hiori. Wow, you've grown up. Okay, well, I'm gonna die soon, so I just wanted to see Wano. I'm glad everything's in, in order. Kaido's dead? Yeah, yeah, Kaido's dead, Mom. Okay, good, that's awesome. Orochi's dead? Oh, yeah, we killed the shit out of him. I'm like, oh, okay, good, that's great. Well, bye, everybody. <laughs> you know, now... I, I will say at that point, if that got to that situation, maybe a little bit exaggerated, but if it did get to that point, you have Marco, you have Chopper, you have a lot of really good doctors, you have Miyagi, who was the mink doctor, you have a lot of really good doctors on standby, so even if Toki arrived with, like, six arrows, like, in her, plus a gunshot wound, um, maybe, I don't know, maybe they could patch her up, maybe they could heal her, at least get her out of death's door, it would be pretty difficult. Oh, Law, Law's also there, too, you got Law, Marco, Chopper, and a goat, alright, who is a goat, so... All of them working together, like, we could do this, everybody. We have the technology. Room! Let's do it! And they might have to perform, like, emergency surgery on Toki. But with Law there, with his powers, that is possible. It is possible to, like, remove the bullet, stop the bleeding, get a blood transfusion in here, get out the arrows and everything. Law's Oppi Oppi Nomi would be great for that, because the whole point of, you know, you pull out an arrow, typically it's gonna, like, shred your body and, like, rip arteries and stuff. But with Law's Oppi Oppi Nomi, he could just, like pop out the arrows like not even a big deal get out the bullet easy patch her up you know get a transfusion toki if that did happen she might be able to survive this i think odin is straight up dead but there's so many questions involving toki i feel like she might just hang on a little bit so now i'm starting to think oda's going with that it's like oh yeah we're gonna make sure she's dead so she's not really dead well anyway with that being that i hope you guys enjoyed this video that took Took about 35 minutes to film, so that was about 27 I have here. I have to edit this down a bit. So this, the power of editing. This one's actually not that bad. There's a few that I can go through without me messing up. I messed up like two or three times in this one, but hey. 
So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, there's actually a lot of really good stuff that happened in Shonen Jump this past week. There was no One Piece, but I do want to talk about Dr. Stone. Black Clover was really good. I might just do a Black Clover video, like, tomorrow, because that one was really solid this week. Mashal is getting really good. If you don't read Mashal, start reading Mashal, because that shit's getting live right now. And My Hero was pretty decent, too. My Hero was pretty decent. But I would say, probably my favorite was, was uh, Black Clover this week. That was just phenomenal what happened there. Anyway, thanks for watching. Teching and Barry, signing out. Stay hydrated! Yeah!